Hi guys, Kelvin here. So today we will be talking about overclocking and undervolting the Ryzen 5 3600X processor. Now my method would not be using the BIOS method for a couple of reasons. One, the BIOS is way more buggy regardless of BIOS revision throughout any motherboard vendor brand compared using to Ryzen Master Software. Famous YouTubers including the one I look up to highly is Optimum Tech has validated this point. Aside from that, using the BIOS method usually it requires two or three more values when it comes to voltage higher compared to Ryzen Master. This would lead to higher temperatures and instability. So I wouldn't recommend that route, especially if you're doing a lot higher overclocking at higher frequency. Third, the Ryzen Master software is very user friendly and it's easier to do tests with its test and apply function. If it fails, you just boot up the window and just re-change the values. Unlike the BIOS method where once you set in the BIOS, you had to wait for a full PC boot up, go to the Windows, then only start your test. So that would take a long time to validate whether the frequency and voltage is stable. Now, the PC or the system that I use for overclocking this baby right here would be based on my previous video, which is the NZXT H5 10 Elite video. That is the full PC that I actually use for overclocking this at various frequency and voltage. But here is the general specs that you can view right now. Now before you can use the Ryzen Master software for overclocking and undervolting, you do need to set your CPU frequency and CPU voltage in the BIOS to be full auto. If not, you'll buck out the Ryzen Master software. You'll face high temps as well as inconsistent results when you do synthetic benchmark on a regular basis. So do that first. However, in the BIOS, it's recommended to set your RAM XMP profile to be of the highest speed. Then you can alter your timing manually by one or two values lower to get it faster running. I set mine to be CL16. 16, 16, 16, 36. It depends on your RAM model and brand whether it's capable to do so. How I do my test is I start with the baseline of 4 GHz and I try up to the highest frequency that I can achieve through my cooler, which is the NZXT X62 280 AIO. That's the best in the market. And I believe a lot of Malaysians will do the AIO route when it comes to overclocking. Now at each frequency, I set the voltage at the base voltage of 1.25 and from there, I will go lower voltage until I hit full stability. Now, many YouTubers are using the Cinebench method after hitting the test and apply in the Ryzen Master software for testing stability or crashes. I find that to be very inaccurate because if you do the synthetic benchmark route or the gaming route, you usually can go one or two voltage lower when it comes to value compared to rendering type. But the minute you run rendering software, it immediately crashes. So I will be based my tests and validation through rendering since I do a lot of content creation. Now, how I do it is very simple. After I set a particular voltage, I straight away fire up Adobe Media Encoder and run a 4K rendering video of our previous uh, review project. If it face any crash or blue screen, I wait until it boots up the windows and use one voltage uh, value higher until I hit full stability on the following test. Media encoder, 4K and 1080p rendering, Lightroom 300 files rendering of raw files, and also StarCraft 2 doing a simple game with at least 100 units. Pass all of these five tests, that shows that voltage is the stable voltage. So here are my results. Lowering the voltage at each frequency helps to lower the CPU temperature when it comes to running at full load or during rendering times. Lowering the voltage reduced the synthetic benchmark score and Lightroom 300 raw files rendering time slightly but nothing major or significant. Adobe Media Encoder seemed to favor a higher frequency and low voltage to increase the 4K and 1080p rendering times to be faster. So the highest frequency that I managed to overclock this processor right here was 4.325 GHz at 1.25 volts. That's the best I can go. And all my tests is done in the ambient temperature between 25 degrees to 30 degrees. And so this is the best overclocking scenario in the real world scenario, no benchmark level thing or liquid cool. So this is legit. Now the reason why I don't do any game test is even you change your frequency to be higher or using lower voltage, the frame rate will be usually two or three values different from different voltages or different frequencies. So uh, frame rates is not important, frame times is important. That one will be discussed in a later video once I have proper testing. So thank you for watching this video. I hope this video is helpful when it comes to setting your frequency and choosing which temperatures you want to achieve through voltage or frequency that you want to set in your Ryzen Master software. 
If you are a rendering person, I would recommend sitting between 4.2 or 4.3 gigahertz that's manageable. So let me know in the comments below what other forms of video you would like to see. I'm open to any suggestions. If you're interested in other related contents to this baby right here, like my NZXT H510 Elite review, links in the video description. If you're interested in purchasing this processor, links in the video description for the place where you can buy, including the updated pricing. So remember to like, subscribe, and help share this video on social media. We need all the necessary boosts so we can make contents like this for you. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next review.